Daniel here and back for another episode of, um, what is this, a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we learn just a tiny bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. Um, today we're talking about callbacks. Uh, these are a ton of fun. These are, these are probably the most useful part of Keras. Um, this allows you to do all the good stuff. Uh, in sort of a really nice way. So let's just look at some examples and get a feel for what callbacks are. Uh, so callbacks are a set of functions to be applied at, at different uh, stages of the training uh, procedure. Um, there's a couple ones that are called for you already. Yes, that's right, it's doing it already for you. The base logger, this accumulates the uh, epic averages of all the uh, metrics. The prog bar, this prints the metrics out to standard out and makes that makes that progress bar that we love. And then the history that records the uh, events to a history object. So these are called all the time. Um, and in fact, each logger, uh, each, I'm sorry, each callback that comes afterwards will have access to a little dictionary called logs, which has all this information. So let's, let's check out some, some more callbacks that we could do. We've got model checkpoint. So this will save your model. Ta-da, yeah. So, you can save it in a particular file format. Um, uh, you, you have access to a couple of uh, formatted strings. Epic is one of them. Val loss is another one. Um, you'll be able to, um, <clears throat> uh, I guess, monitor is the incorrect thing. You'll be able to save the best only. Um, best being determined who has the least uh, val loss. Um, and you'll be able to also save the weights only. Uh, you, you can determine you can actually monitor specific things and make the mode max or, or min or auto here. So generally speaking, it should be min, but I change this to max for the fun. Um, and then period, this is how many, so after five epics, every five epics, I would do this is the period. Um, so that's, that's model checkpoint. Um, the next thing is early stopping. Uh, so early stopping is, um, so for example, you monitor a specific quantity, we'll monitor the vowel loss. Uh, we will wait uh, to see if this vowel loss uh, increases, does better. We'll wait five periods for it to do better by at least the min delta. And if it doesn't do better in five periods by the min delta, then we'll just go ahead and we'll stop it. We'll stop training. This is called early stopping. Um, you can prove that uh, for linear regression, uh, early stopping is similar to um, uh, uh, L2 loss. So this is, it's, it's a regularizer. Um, there's also something called the, um, the learning rate scheduler. Uh, so the learning rate scheduler will, at the end of each epic, it will change your learning rate um, to something. So in this case, it, the X is actually the epic. Um, so it can, it can just change it to be uh, one point divided by the epic. So we can like change, change the learning rate depending on which epic it is. Um, in addition, this, this one, sorry, I, I almost never use this, uh, the, the, that you can. Uh, in addition, what I do here is I, I do uh, this somewhat commonly uh, reduced learning rate on plateau. Again, we've got patience. So if we plateau, if our um, vowel, loss, vowel loss plateaus for 10 epics um, such that it doesn't see a, uh, an improvement of more than uh, this much, epsilon, then we go ahead and reduce the learning rate by a factor of this, um, and we uh, wait for four epics before restarting the uh, reduction plateau. Um, in addition, we have a minimum learning rate. So that is reduced learning rate on plateau. We use that often. I almost never use this. This basically just logs all of the uh, results to a CSV. Uh, instead, what I often use is TensorBoard. Oh my, the fun. Um, in fact, there's a pull request out right now, and it will certainly be out by the time that you see this video, that will allow you to also visualize the uh, gradients in TensorBoard. Oh man, you can you can do so much. So so TensorBoard will natively, it will log out um, the metrics, everything logs, it will go ahead and it'll log out. Um, it will log it out to a specific directory. It will log out the histograms if you have a validation data um, at some uh, period. It will... Uh, write the graph, um, so that's awesome. It will write the images 
uh, if you have any images, what these images are is it will they'll display the kernels. I almost never use this is useless, and it will do it will actually visualize the embeddings using like the TensorBoard native embedding visualizer. And if you've never seen that, we'll definitely explore that if we do some like actual like a little bit of TensorFlow and and um, and deep learning or something like that. So so we'll explore that later. Um, but if you've not seen this, you can you can do like PCA embeddings and TSNE embeddings. That's very very cool. Um, callbacks. These, these are great. These are great. So, it, I mean, really, it's anything you want to do. As you're training your model, there's a ton of stuff you want to do. You might want to log what the model looks like at a particular layer. You might want to write an image out at a particular low layer. I mean, for example, I, I have done things as crazy as um, let's let's literally change the, the way my model is, is training each layer. I'll alternate between different training regimes. Um, you, you do this all via a callback. Um, so that's, that's really awesome. There are, um, there's, there's two types of custom callbacks. There's a lambda callback and then a super duper custom callback. Um, lambda callback is pretty much good enough to do everything you want. Uh, you, you pass it in, so it's a lambda callback. You pass it in a couple of functions on train in, for example. So for example, I can print batch. Uh, so I, I, I'll go ahead and I'll print the batch uh, on, on each batch end on batch beginning. Uh, so that's a specific callback I can do. I can um, terminate some processes after I finish training. The, literally all sorts of stuff I can do with the Lambda. In, in addition, if you prefer to use a more object-oriented way to make custom callbacks, you can do the super custom callbacks. You can go ahead and just use the um, uh, uh, inherit from the uh, keras.callbacks.callback. And you can give it all of these, all these goodies, all these goodies here. Uh, params, dictionary, a model, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah. So awesome. Uh, I hope this is somewhat useful. Um, honestly, I, I include the TensorBoard callback um, in literally everything that I do. Uh, I love this callback. It, it gets frequently updated. Um, custom callbacks are also very, very useful. Um, uh, when, when trying to do unique things at, at the end of epics and batches and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed and thank you ever so much.